Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Again, I do apologize for the being late today. We were having a few technical difficulties, but I believe we got those worked out now. So we'll go ahead and get started here. And welcome to the Denali Payroll Webinar Series by Cougar Mountain. To We're going to continue on with the uh, presentation of the Denali Payroll module. Anyone who has uh, logged in with us today, if you have any comments or questions, you can type them in the chat box here. Uh, please make sure your mic is muted uh, so that we don't have any interruptions. Uh, we're going to be trying to keep going through this webinar in an even flow, and then we'll do some questions at the end of the webinar here. Uh, my name is Jeremy Beisline. I am your presenter again today. And today's topics, we're going to be uh, moving on to employee management. I know this is one that uh, everybody's been waiting for today. So we're going to do the first part of that this week, second part next week. Uh, we'll run this webinar for about 15 to 20 minutes, and then we'll do a Q&A session for 10 to 15 minutes afterwards and get it cleared up within about 30 minutes. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, entering the employee information and managing your employee information in payroll. Uh, we're going to be talking about the different options there. The first three options would be the employee management, the year-to-date summary, and the pay, pay rates and taxes. At the end, we'll do our Q&A session after that. All right, uh, we're bringing up the payroll here. Uh, here we are on the main navigation screen. Now to get to your employee management, there's a couple ways to do that here in Denali Payroll. Uh, one option is on the employee menu here on the left. Uh, it's the first option, Add Change Employee Records. Uh, the simplest way is right here on the main screen, uh, your navigation screen. You would just go ahead and select Set Up Employee Records here. And with that, it, it brings open your employee maintenance screen here. This is where you would enter in new employees. Basically, you would enter an employee number. Uh, uh, once you enter their number, you can use their last name for that if, if you'd like. Then you would put their name in, last name, first name, middle initial, and then junior, senior, et cetera here. Uh, social security number, department, filing status. This filing status is very important because this is what determines which tax table to pull from when calculating their tax information. And then when you enter the information, it will populate their name used automatically, but you can change that if needed. An example would be uh, if I was to enter John Doe here, and let's give him a middle initial of S just for fun then it populates his name automatically in the name used. And you can change that if needed, if we need to change a different name. Position, what position they're working at in your company, address, city, state, zip, etc., phone number, sale number, birth date, hire date, seniority date, and termination date. Those You would put those in. Termination date is grayed out until you set their status as a status code that is uh, the termination type, status type terminated, then it opens up the termination date to let you put that in here if needed. That's for employee maintenance. You can put their email in, emergency contact person for this employee, and phone number here. So with that, uh, we'll go ahead and pull up an employee that we already have in the system here. And again, we've got these by last name set for the employee number in our, for our demo data which is just fine. You can use numbers, letters, or a combination of both on the employee number here. So we've got Kathy Janeway for our employee. Uh, you can edit the information as needed uh, if their address changes, anything in here that is needed, their general information here. Uh, filing status, again, is very important, determining which tax code to pull from. Also, it's very important in the pay information window here. This is important information on how Cougar Mountain Denali Payroll will calculate their taxes when you run the payroll for this employee. Uh, pay type, you've got hourly, salary, or combined. You can select any of those. Uh, salary is just a set number. If you do hourly, it will take the units and multiply it by the rate to figure out their pay. Salary just puts in their pay rate that you enter in here uh, on, on the pay rates tab, which we'll get to in just a moment. Biweekly is the pay frequency we have for, the, for this employee. You can set them up uh, under any of these pay frequencies. Weekly, monthly, semi-monthly, bi-weekly. Uh, last, last raise date, you can also put that information here. 
for informational purposes. Check location and site location. Uh, what this is for is if you run payroll out of a central office somewhere or if you run it out of another office, you can put that information here of where their paycheck is located when the payroll is run. Site location is where the employee is actually working on their job. Okay, and then moving on down, this last section here is the last paycheck information. It just basically shows the last check number date and the check amount for this employee that you'll see here. To get detailed information on which paychecks have been run for this employee, we move on to the year-to-date summary. A uh, year-to-date summary is basically your employee history. All of the transactions that have occurred for this employee you'll see listed here. Basically their paycheck, uh, date, regular hours, regular pay, overtime, etc. is all listed out here. And when you scroll over you'll see further information their gross amount, federal tax withholding, state with tax withholding, other deductions, other benefits, etc., and their net pay at the end here. And you can also, in Denali Payroll, with any of these tabs, you can actually take this screen here for employee maintenance and maximize that to get a full screen. That gives you a better layout so you can see more of the information on there. And again, it spreads it out further so you can see the information as needed. And this will show a history of all of their paychecks for the current year. Uh, right now, for this employee, we've only got one paycheck so far. So, All right, so moving on. Uh, oh, one more thing on this one. At the bottom, you see the year-to-date totals for everything. You've got a grand total of all of your employees, taxable wages, Social Security, Medicare wages. This is what you'll see on the W-2 if you were to run your W-2 report in boxes 1, 3, and 5. Federal tax withholding, Social Security, and Medicare. This is boxes 2, 4, and 6 on the W-2. And this is the year-to-date total as of right now. All right, moving on, the pay rates and taxes. This is the screen right here where all of your pay rate and tax information is inputted for this employee when you're setting up an employee. Uh, the top section here is their pay rates. Most companies might just have one line. They'll have uh, one pay rate for each employee. Uh, you can go ahead and put in the department for that. It will default to the department that you have for each pay rate you enter, but of course you can always change that if you have more than one department that you need to spread out this employee's pay over. As you can see on this example, we have four different pay rates split, split out over four different departments. We have department one, which is the default, but we have three other departments as well. And that was set up in our department codes that we talked about last week. Then you would enter, this is a salaried employee, so you enter the salary amount for each paycheck. You'll enter the salary amount for each paycheck for each of these departments that would apply for each paycheck. This employee gets a total of $1,800 per paycheck, so the salary is split out among, the $1,800 is split out among the departments as showing here. Now let's see if we can find an hourly employee here so that we can talk about the default units column here. That's very important. Here's an hourly. This is a perfect example of just one department. Uh, your default units, basically in this example, is hourly units. Default units means that they work 80 hours per pay period. Since we have this employee set up on a bi-weekly pay period, as you can see here, we have uh, Mrs. Hansen set up on bi-weekly, then she, receives, she works full-time, so she works 80 hours a week, so we can enter that information here in the employee setup. And this saves a lot of time when processing your payroll on a bi-weekly basis because their hours are already entered in in this case. And then this is the hourly rate. This is the overtime hourly rate. Now, since she's hourly, the system will calculate default units times the regular pay, the regular rate. And it does that automatically with each payroll run. That saves a lot of time when entering payroll on a weekly basis. 
Okay, so we're we're going to go back to our previous employee example here with the different departments I had split out here. Some information I wanted to show you guys on that on this webinar here. Right here. Um, one of the neat things about Denali payroll is you can, in the employee setup, you can set default units and regular rates for each department. You can also assign a tax code for each department. This is very handy when you've got multi-state em employees, multi-state payrolls that you're running where you have the same employee working in different states. Some of their pay will be will be taxed in one state and some of their pay will be taxed in another state. And the way you do that is you would enter the tax codes down here in the tax information. That's in the lower part. You enter their tax code here and we talked about tax codes on the previous webinar that are all set up. You'll apply whichever tax codes for this employee here. Uh, you would enter that information here. Most employees may just have one tax code under federal and one state, like California, for example. But if this is a multi-state employee, you can enter additional state tax codes as needed. Those of you who are using Cougar Mountain Professional, you remember you're limited to three state codes and one local code. In Denali Payroll, you have unlimited tax codes. You can put as many as you need, state and local and it's all listed here. You can add another one here if needed and just keep going on down as many as needed. So, And then you would apply the tax code to the pay rate up here. Now we have this set out to different departments. If, if the pay rates are in the same department but different tax codes, you would just add another pay rate here under the same department and just put the different tax code in if needed. And again, you would put in the default units on hourly employees, but for salary employees, the default units don't apply. You just enter the salary amount for each code. And then when you're processing payroll, Cougar Mountain will automatically process the pay rate for the department and apply the correct tax code to this pay rate that you have entered here. And this is where Cougar Mountain Denali payroll saves a lot of time and effort on your weekly or bi-weekly payroll runs just by doing the setup here for each employee. Okay, so with that, uh, we covered the first three sections of your employee payroll setup. Uh, with our next webinar coming up next week, we're going to talk about the benefit deduction codes, the lead codes, and then we'll get into the direct deposit notes as well. So. Make sure you stay tuned next week for the, the rest of the information on setting up your payroll, your employees in Denali Payroll. Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and open up the chat line for uh, Q&A session now. So go ahead and enter your questions in the chat field, and we'll get to as many as we can here for the next uh, few minutes here. All right, our first question I have is from Emily. She's asking if you can run checks batched by check location. Uh, the way you would do that is you would probably set that up under different departments. You would set locations up under different departments in payroll, and then you would just run the payroll batch by department, and that's the way you would do that in Denali Payroll. All right, moving on here. Okay, good question by Trish. Does default units have to be used? Uh, let me go ahead and pull back to the previous example we were showing here uh, under default units here. Um, default units are not required in the payroll setup for the employee, but if you leave it at zero, if you don't enter a number here and leave it at zero, when you run the payroll, you'll have to enter the number of hours at the time you run payroll. By entering default units, that will save a lot of time when you actually run the payroll each time you run payroll every two weeks or by or twice monthly or however often you do that. Um, we'll talk about that further when we get to our future webinar that talks about running the payroll and I'll show you how that works. But by entering the defaults here, it does save you that step that you, so that you don't have to enter those when running payroll. It saves you time on that. All right, moving on. Okay, and a, a question here from Dick. It looks like I skipped that one. I apologize. Uh, he asked a question about uh, leave 
section uh, talking about leave codes, vacation, etc. Um, we're going to cover that on next week's webinar and we'll go over all that information and probably uh, be able to answer your question there. So just wanted to make sure we got you covered there. Yeah. Okay, a question in here for exempt versus non-exempt employees. Currently Denali Payroll does not have a specified setting for that. What you would probably do in that case is just set them up under another department or even you can use them in the same department, just set the employee up with a regular rate and not give them an overtime rate if they do not get overtime or set them up a salary. All right, another question I have here from Dick. Um, he asked about the Utah tax code specifically if Denali payroll will calculate those correctly as they're having some issues in professional payroll. Um, to answer your question on that, we are uh, reviewing the tax codes in Denali payroll and making sure we have the most up-to-date information for Denali payroll. So it should calculate those correctly. Um, if there is an issue with that, we will review that and make sure we make any corrections as needed along the way with that. So moving on here. Okay, another question. Uh, that's a good question actually. Uh, the question is, can you have a different filing status for federal versus state? Uh, with Cougar Mountain Denali payroll, we do not have that set up right now. You set the filing status here under the employee setup and then it will apply that filing status on all tax codes that you enter in the tax information down here for this employee. So it will be the same filing status for all tax codes. Okay, question from Ben. How does combined versus hourly salary work? That is a very good question, Ben. Uh, the way that works is, is when you set the employee up, right here we have an example of three different types. We have it set up as hourly on all of these types. If the employee is set up as hourly versus salary, you can actually, combined, you can set each of these up individually on the pay rate. And you would set one pay rate up for the hourly portion and another pay rate up for the salary, salary portion for that employee. And then Cougar Mountain will calculate the units times the rate to get the hourly. On the salary, the default units won't apply. It'll just enter, do the rate here of what the salary amount is. So yes, you can definitely do combined hourly versus salary on one employee and that's how that would work. All right, a question here from Don. Uh, he's asking if, if you have employees that have several different pay rates, is the overtime pay figured with a weighted average? Um, to answer your question there, you would have to do an overtime pay rate for each pay rate you have set up for that employee. And then what you would do is you would just determine which one of those apply as far as overtime goes um, based on what rate they are being paid on at the time they're working the overtime hours. And that would, we can get into that further at the time of entering payroll. You have default units here. You can set additional hours under the default units in the setup. If it goes over 40 hours total, you would uh, just put those extra hours under whichever pay rate they would need to get the overtime paid for. That's how Cougar Mountain Denali payroll calculates that. All right, a question from Susan. Um, she's asking how to not apply state taxes if an employee prepays state taxes. That is a great question. You still need to put the tax code on the employee so that uh, Cougar Mountain can calculate the, the amount of wages for that particular state. But the way you exempt that employee from actually having the withholdings taken out of her check for that state is you would simply enter 99 exemptions here and that would calculate it out with 99 exemptions so that basically you're never going to have any taxes taken out if there, there's that many exemptions. And that's the way you would take that out. And of course the additions you would put zero so that there's no taxes withheld from the employee's paycheck for that particular state tax code on this employee. Okay, I got time for one more question here. Uh, we have one here. Okay, good question from Christy. Uh, she said she noticed that there's a filing status. We have uh, for married filing, you can do joint or separately. Those are our options. Um, this is a, a feature in Denali payroll. The W-4 that your employees give you does, does not choose joint or separate. The way you would determine that based on the W-4 is there's a box on there that says they're married filing joint or else they have another box that says married but withholding at a single rate, at a higher single rate you would probably select filing separately on that case. 
that would just use the filing separately tax code. Right now, most state tax codes and the federal tax code uses the single tax rate for this married filing separately. It's separated out here in Denali payroll, but if you look at the tax code, it's going to be the same one for both in the federal and most states. There may be a few states that are different on that. Now, to determine exactly what you want to select here based on what they put on their W-4, make sure you consult your payroll tax professional to determine the best tax code that needs to be selected for that. Uh, but, but there is an option on the W-4 that says married but withhold at the higher single rate. I know that box is an option on the W-4 and that's probably where you would select that. Make sure you verify that with your tax professional though. All right, and with that, uh, I know there may be one or two other questions we didn't get to. I apologize, but we will be getting back to those on the Q&A session. We'll get those questions answered for you and post them on the website, uh, on the Q&A section of the, the webinar on the website. So make sure you check that out. Uh, you can also review this webinar again on the website. It will be posted up for you. Uh, and with that, we'll go ahead and conclude our webinar here. Be sure to Stay tuned. Uh, every Wednesday at noon will be another webinar. We've got five left starting next week. Uh, these are the upcoming webinars we have. Next week we'll continue the employee setup and we'll finish the, the leave codes, the uh, benefit deduction codes for each employee. And so if you have any questions or comments, then feel free to give us a call. Uh, you can also send an email. You can also go to the website and submit your comments there.